Alexa. Okay, Google. Hey, Siri. Play Double, Double Trouble, Trouble podcast. podcast. Hola. Bonjour. Ni hao. Moi. Guten Tag. Hello. Yamoroit, as we say in the West Midlands. Whatever you want to say it. Hello. Welcome to the Double Trouble podcast with me, Oliver Phelps. And me, James Phelps. Thank you very much for joining us this week. And again, we are very, very lucky because we finally tracked him down. We finally locked him down to a little time to spare to have a little chat with us. Our good pal from the Potter Films, Mr. Tom Felton. Yes, that's right. So as you say, we managed to track him down and uh, extract some information. I'm only joking. It was so easy because Tom is such an easy person to talk to. Um, he was talking to us from his base at the moment out there in Arizona. So but you'll learn all that when you watch the show. So I don't want to give too much away other than we were really, really happy to be able to get this in the bag. Finally. Yeah, what we had in the same in common as when we spoke to Luke Youngblood, when we spoke to Bonnie Wright, when we spoke to Hayley Joel Osman, when we spoke to Johanna Conta. What we found is that we were asking questions to these guys that we've known for years and years and years, questions which we've never asked before, mainly work-related, because it's something that we never talk about with each other. It's normally personal lives and all that kind of stuff when we're together. So I actually learned some stuff about Tom during this this talk, which I've, I have never knew before. So that was quite a fun thing to discover. Um, we also talk quite a bit about our particular hobbies that we like and um i'm sure that hopefully you guys will enjoy it just as much as we enjoyed hanging out with him today exactly exactly but anyway james what have you been doing up since our last uh, our last time we spoke to everybody with our podcast with uh, with luke youngblood last week yeah uh before I go into what I've been up to, again, thank you very much to everybody for all the great response uh, for our chat with Luke last week. It was really good chatting with him. And thankfully, everybody seems to have liked this. That was all good. Um, yeah, so this week, my telescope and I have been up and all the way through the night checking out nebulas and planets. So, but what is a nebula? Because it's a, a ne strange word. Right, a nebula. A nebula is basically a giant cloud of dust and gas in space. And um, they normally look really pretty. So you've got some with like greens and reds and blues and all that kind of stuff. So they're actually rather cool to look at. So I thoroughly recommend, if you can, check them out. Okay. So apart from gazing up at the night sky throughout the night, anything else? Which doesn't include running or not learning Spanish. Um, gardening. Also whilst running, I was called a couple of other names, which was quite nice. Apparently this week I look like Captain Caveman. Captain Caveman? Yeah. What, the guy with the club? Yeah. So him and... Who called you that while you were running? Some guy, like, you know, there's, there's like four people who weren't walking in social distancing, taking up the whole pavement. So I thought I'm just going to run around them, but make a point. And then you hear the one guy go, it's Captain Caveman. So that was interesting. Uh, um, and then on Twitter, someone kindly made me aware that apparently I look like one of the creatures from Where the Wild Things Are. <laughs> so thanks for that one. But no, it's well, been good fun. At least you learned something new about yourself anyway. Definitely. Well, and, and also, usually on a Thursday night, my pals and I meet down the pub, but obviously that hasn't happened for the last seven or eight weeks because of the lockdown. So we've been doing our Zoom pub, which has been fun. So on Saturday, we did a Zoom quiz but everyone had to wear a fancy dress or dress up, essentially. So as quiz master, I had different hats on um, and I put a flat cap on. Apparently, I look like a traditional farmer now. So that was good to hear. But a highlight was there was uh, two guys who were doing the quiz and they're in their house. And the guy, Ben, was dressed in his Tiger King outfit. And his missus was dressed as, I think she was dressed as... Um, Jessica Rabbit or someone like that. Anyway, halfway through the quiz, the, the old lady who lives next door walked into the wrong house. So she, she walked into their house thinking it was her own. So not only that, she then saw that the Tiger King and Jessica Rabbit were sitting on a Zoom chat. <laughs> I'm still yet to discover what actually went down there. But yeah, very, very confusing time, I think, was had on the, that quiz. So then I came into question, yeah, who was this lady? Like... Oh, wow. And how about you? What have you been up to this week? 
Uh, I have been just kind of plodding along really with everything. Uh, there's been a few business, some really cool business stuff I'm involved with, which has been getting more and more exciting, which is uh, just filling a bit of time. So that's quite nice getting on the phone with people and we're again, Zoom chatting and seeing how we can move on to the next steps with, with, these, with these different businesses, which has been just something different really. Um, and it's always quite funny being able to speaking with some people, you know, what are you doing this week? What are you doing that week? But yeah, as, as you say, I think the world has come to a place now where you're doing a Zoom call. So we were on, uh, we were on, on the phone or on a Zoom chat with a major retailer. And, uh, and all of a sudden this, this bloke's, he, was, he starts getting quite expressionative. And uh, so we're like sitting there and he's, he's getting really carried away with what he's, what he's saying. I won't name him or, or name the company, but he's getting really over the top with it, really enjoying what he's saying. And you see the door in the background open, but don't, I thought, oh, the wind's opened it or something like that. And this guy's, he's kind of like in, I suppose he was in a relaxed environment speaking with a, with a few of us because he's, his language was getting more choice, more choice. And next thing you know, you hear, mummy said, don't use that word. And this guy turns around, he's like, oh, I'm really sorry, guys, I'm gonna have to call you back. And he just, and next time he came on, he was, he was really timid and everything. So we'll, we'll see what came of that, of that meeting. But yeah, just, just different stuff, really stuff like that. There was a, a cryptocurrency thing that I invested in a couple of, a year ago now, which is called giving services. Because I was looking at something and someone brought it to my attention actually on, on Twitter. It's basically for every, after the transaction's made and there's like a, wherever the profit is made on that, uh, the company then go on to be it from buying someone on the frontline services, groceries, paying the bills, we even send them on a holiday when the funds are there. So that's been quite cool, just seeing little stuff like that, what I totally forgot about. Um, and then just kind of just getting back into looking at that. And also got to give a big, big plug here. Thank you for the golf clubs to be open as well, because I'm enjoying that as well. Yes, very much so. In fact, being on the golf course, I think, is one of the most calming things I can do. Uh, because I've come into a little tendency now, because it's so light here until going on 10 o'clock in the evening, uh, I'm able to play a, a cheeky nine holes around eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. Mm. Good, mm. Way to, good way to get out. No, but actually, but it's quite funny though, because obviously it's, uh, as you say, it's late. Um, it's light, very late. I was playing the other day on my on my own, boo-hoo. Um, and this, uh, there was a par three, and next to my golf course is a uh, is a hotel, which is obviously deserted at the moment with the current state but there's some there's some huge steps which run along the side of it these, these grandiosa looking steps and there was a young couple probably about i don't know 16 17 you know young love obviously both got out in the in these social distancing and they were kissing each other and everything like that and there was them and then me about 100 yards away on the on the green and i look up and they look up and see me and for those watching on youtube i did this Um, which probably, in hindsight, ruined the mood, but I, I had a good little chuckle to myself as well. And then they, they ran away as fast as they could in, because I, I was walking down, um, walking back to the car park, and they both split in totally separate directions. So whether they thought, oh, maybe he knows my dad or something like that, but it was, um, yes, simple things which make me smile. And obviously, when I get home, I just loved looking at all the responses from people from last week's show with Luke Youngblood. Um, as a lot of you could tell, we have had a great, great time catching up with him, uh, learning all about his road trip and everything going on. So that was just really cool, reading through everybody's messages. And also as well, a big shout out to everyone who's listening to this, who may not be going through the best time at the moment, because I can appreciate that um, not being able to be it see friends, see family, even to a point where, say, if you're in, you're going to see someone in therapy or something like that, and you can't physically be there, you're doing it, um, you're doing it through a, an app or something like that. that. That may be a bit more tricky. So, a big shout out to all the people who got in touch and just said that listening to the, us two and whoever waffle on for an hour or so in there is the highlight of their their week. That means so much to hear, and it's really really nice to hear that. It's given you some type of release and that is that is great because at the end of the day as long as even if you're the only person listening who gets what i'm saying right now this is going out to you because you deserve just to feel the better best as everybody does as well because it's really nice to uh to know that we're appreciated for doing it but also i want you to know that we appreciate the appreciation shown to us if there's not too many appreciations in that so say it one more time 
the appreciations to us for appreciating you um, is reciprocated. No, I'm just going to keep it the original way I said it. Yeah, I think so. I think that's fine. So, yeah, big shout out to that. Um, have you done any more running? Because I know you said that you wanted to get into your running and you started at the lockdown. How are you progressing? I started to, and I've got to be honest with you, I haven't for the last week. Um, I've been going out in my Morgan, which for those who don't know, is a two-seater, very English-style sports car. And I've been driving around the countryside in that. Yeah, enjoying that and enjoying going around in my Muttley, as I call him, because I always think if he was... It's a bit like, it reminds me of the Wacky Races from, you know, back in the day with Dick Dastardly and people like that. So... Um, I suppose, yeah, just doing that. And then shout out as well to the people who have uh, been getting their cameo videos in as well. I'm really enjoying that at the moment because there's been some some good ones this week. So, um, quite a few of them were like uh, graduation stuff, weddings, what may have unfortunately been postponed or something like that. But yeah, there's been some great, great stuff. And some people have sent me some wicked reaction videos as well to seeing it. So as I say, a big, big shout out to everyone um, on the cameo app who have been uh, been booking this in that time. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. That was, uh, again, echoing what Oliver said. It's been very enjoyable and also quite upsetting to hear how many things have been cancelled because of this this process. The um, people's graduations, their people's birthday plans, wedding plans, all that kind of stuff. But just know that one day is not going to separate all the great achievements that you've done if it's regard to graduation. If, it, if you're having a birthday party, which you can't have done at the moment, Let's face it, you can have another proper one when all this is over. And wedding-wise, don't worry, you'll be able to get married soon. So you can't have another one of those. Well, you can. Well, you can you defer, well, you can do. It probably wouldn't be the best idea, but, would it? No. no. I take it you but, don't work in, uh, in relationship advice, James. I'd be great at that, I think. Is it working? No. Oh, well. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it, it, as I say, it is, it, is quite, it is quite astounding how much stuff has been cancelled or, or been deferred a year or something like that. I know friend, I've been already heard that there's been three weddings we were supposed to go to this year uh, that my wife and I have now got to go to next year. So it's, um, it is an unfortunate event, but it's nice to see that a lot of people are just dealing with it, which is, uh, just shows the positive on people. And just getting on. Actually, while I remember, completely unrelated to uh, weddings now, my mind's wandered down the down the path um a lot of people were asking so the other day on my instagram i put a photo of saturn which i took did you though well this is it i did and i can prove it on my phone but people have been asking how i took it and i've got to be completely honest this was the first time i ever tried to take a photo of a planet and the it's called the t-ring which you use to adapt your proper camera to the telescope that one hasn't and when you say when you say sorry to interrupt but when you say your proper camera do you mean like a nikon or a cassie or a canon or something like that a canon yeah my so, I've, so i've got a canon yeah my slr canon the a clip that you use to attach it hasn't arrived yet so my first bit of astrological photography was actually me standing with my phone trying to get a photo down the eyepiece so out of the 200 I took that was the best one that turned out and it seemed to come out okay so I hope to get better ones shortly but it's been really nice to hear that I'm not the only space nerd and speaking to... speaking of space nerd did you know okay cause some people were asking where the did you know was last week so I was oh, going to ask you this week random did you know all on space did you know okay. that a full NASA spacesuit costs yes. 12 million US dollars. One suit. One suit. And 70% of that is for the backpack and the control module. Hang on. What do you mean? When you say space suit, do you mean like when you say backpack and control module, do you mean like as in a, some, just something they wear on takeoff? Well, if they go to do a spacewalk and all that kind of stuff. Oh, that type of one. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, so, you don't want to scrimp on that though, do you? You'd make sure you know where that, that one is in the wardrobe, wouldn't you? And here's another interesting fact, I think, anyway. did you although, know? That... Although, sorry to interrupt, but going back to weddings, I bet there's a lot of people who are listening who know somebody whose wedding dress cost maybe not 12 million quid, but quite an investment, and never gets worn again. Well, it may get worn if they... You may run out of clothes to wear on the lockdown. You could wear a I wedding wish. dress. I wish. Okay. Or tux. Can we... Anyway, we have a let me go back for a shout out for next week. A competition for a go... shout out next week. If you've got your wedding dress in your wardrobe and you haven't worn it since your wedding day, snap a photo, 
tag us in it and we'll give you a shout out next week just to prove to your other half see i do wear it um mainly because i was having this exact conversation with my wife this week she was trying to get me to throw out some clothes and i said well you never wear that that one over there and um yeah that that didn't go down too well so as i say a big shout out to all the ladies who are holding on to wedding dresses that they probably won't use again but here's your chance here's your chance okay my second did you know question is Oliver, have a guess at what the hottest planet in the solar system is. Um, I would say that Venus. No, Mercury. Going on the name, Mercury. You were right the first time. It is Venus. It's Venus. Oh, I because it's so close. Venus, although it is the second closest planet to the sun, yes. it has the average surface temperature of 450 degrees centigrade. Wow. You get a good tan there then. Which is hotter than hot. Than hot. Yeah. Hotter than hot. Water four times with that. But although it's not the closest planet to the sun, that's Mercury. The reason that Mercury hasn't, isn't as hot as Venus is because it doesn't have an atmosphere to regulate the temperature. So the heat comes in and out quite quickly. You mean? So there you go. Okay. Brilliant. Have you got a did you know what is not space related? Uh, do I have a did you know that is not space related? Did you know the longest river in the UK is the River Seven? Yes, I did. Okay. okay. Thank you very much for that one today, James. Can I have a theme tune for my did you knows? Wow. That would be a, In fact, can. Could we uh, ask? What about that? Doesn't that doesn't that work? If you're a good, wow, wow. no. If if you're a, a very good musician and you wish to do a little bit of a jingle, please send a little jingle for a did you know? A jingle for a did you know? Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. I don't know where to send them though. Well, maybe they could tag you in on it. Yes, that'll be that'll be good. And you could give them a big big shout out when you do your jingle. I still prefer. Mine I love the wow wow. I love the bit. What I've also learned during this lockdown period is I've, I've listened to a lot of podcasts and shows, and that term "shout out" has come everywhere. Shout out! So, well, I'm shouting out. Hello. You, you're not though. You just say, "I'd like to say." So, okay. That's another okay. term. No, that's another phrase that oh, I always get confused with. I just want to say. Well, just say it then. You mean you mean like people saying, "I mean," yes, I know I mean, what you mean. You're saying it anyway, James. Let's get on to what we are here to show people. Yes, today. As we mentioned before, we chatted to our good pal, Tom Felton, and we do talk about a lot of random stuff, but we do try and swing the conversations around to some Potter things, which even I didn't know. So I hope you guys enjoy. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tom Felton. Do you have a jingle? Cool. Would, you like, would you like me to do some sort of jingle? Yeah, yeah. do a jingle, Tom. His name is Ollie. <laughs> His name is James. That's about the guitar out. That was crap. All right, let me finish my... <laughs> Let me finish my coffee and then I'll, be, uh, then I'll have it by the end of it, I promise. Uh, what's, what's going on, chaps? Thanks for, um, yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Good to see your faces. You both look, you both look pretty, uh, pretty well, considering. Yeah, we're trying our best, mate. Trying our best. I'm in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in my, uh, my, my little golf room at the moment. So all's going oh, well. sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, that, is a, that is a, not, not a bad place to, to spend some time isolating. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And James is in his little, um, I think he's in his room full of studies. So he's recently got a, 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 what's that, a telescope. Oh, yeah, that's it there. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Yeah. So what, are you, uh, what, what are you checking out? What are you stargazing? Uh, I've seen planets, I've seen galaxies, I've seen nebulas. I'm just going to pretend I know what a nebula yeah, is. Yeah. Definitely, I heard it somewhere along the lines. Uh, what about I'm... the Lego? The last time we spoke, you were on the Lego. Oh, yeah. You? There's I also built Trafalgar <laughs> Square. Wow! Yeah. Actually, what with the the lions? Pretty, let me see. I've got it. My and eyes are pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> there you go. Look, Trafalgar Square. That is pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. So yeah, anyway, sorry. <laughs> what have you been doing then to to relieve any boredom at the moment? Where are you? Where are you at the moment, Tom? Are you in California? No, we ju- we sort of um, we had we headed east uh, a while ago. Derek and I, my roommate and I, am Willow, of course, um, just to sort of get out of the the LA <clears throat> LA city for a bit. And uh, yeah, we've we've been in Arizona now for 
about four weeks. Um, there's a lot less, lot less people. Uh, it's a lot, it's a lot hotter, and uh, and some of the golf courses have been open. Oh, I was going to so, say, yeah. is this golf player uh, thing in this? <laughs> Maybe just a tip. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, in terms of like, in terms of like the golf thing, would you say that? Because I remember you you started pretty much when we were filming, didn't you? Like towards the end of filming, because we somehow managed to blag that. I think it's always the best blag when we got to go to the uh, the Ryder Cup course. The yeah. year of the Ryder Cup. Speaking of which, look what look what I found. Oh my God! There it is. Oh no way! That's brilliant. Brilliant. That, that was that. a hell of a. Yes, I will always always look up to you boys for that blag. That was one hell of a. <laughs> that was one hell of a blag. And actually, I'm pretty sure that was my first. Well, it was my first proper. 18 holes definitely maybe I'd, i probably didn't finish them all but before that i think i'd been sort of just par three hacking uh and yeah. what a course what a course to do it on a nice easy one like the 2010 <laughs> bloody hell yeah exactly so i remember i remember we i remember putting the idea to um publicity to go and do that well they actually tell like they came to it they they were chatting with me about it about going to a driving range and yeah. then cut a long story short we somehow convinced them that it would be a great idea to send you, James, Rupert, and myself to Cardiff to or to to Newport, sorry, in Wales to record it on the the course because the Ryder Cup was going to be played there later that year. Um, I managed to get two days out of it. I think my dad and his pal came along and played in the group. Oh yeah, it is. You were on a roll. <laughs> you were on a roll because it started with because uh, I think it was something. Cause at the time, I had Timber, my last dog, and I think they wanted to come around the house to see me walking the dog or, or doing something like that. And I thought this is, this is a, not a good idea. And I re remember one of you suggesting, uh, <laughs> let's, let's go play golf. And I knew Rupert was into it. So I, I kind of clung on to your already plan, but by the end of it, you'd managed to get yeah, a full weekend spa packages. <laughs> dad was on the way. <laughs> they looked well, hard, just to be fair, Celtic Manor. Yeah. They they really did. Did. And, one th and one thing I've learned over the years is that they can only say no. So, there we go. It's true. Probably should have been used off sooner on, but no, it's all good fun. But how's, <laughs> how's the golf been anyway? Yeah, well, it's been, uh, been a lot better. You know what it's like when you play regularly. It, you start to uh, start to get into a groove a little bit. Although, again, you know what it's like when you can have a couple of rounds where you think, I've got this. This isn't hard. Golf's an easy game. And then about a week ago, I started developing the shanks. Ooh. which uh, for, the, for those of your listeners who don't know, it means basically hitting the ball with the wrong... With the wrong bit at the end and uh it being lethal on a golf course <laughs> so that's always fun it's a curse word in golf as well isn't it is it don't it don't say it have you ever had them yeah have you ever experienced having like five or six in the same round or whatever oh, I have I've, yeah i found the easiest ways to just leave the course <laughs> if, well, <laughs> for me anyway. bad idea. but there's that and there's um, the yips right the putting yips i'm not quite sure what that is yet. you haven't got those have you <laughs> <laughs> not not yet, but I am golfing today. So <laughs> Take a new sport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good time. Because <laughs> you, you, you love your golf, don't you? Because don't you go to the, the Tour of Champions um, in Hawaii the last couple of years? Yeah, I have done. I have done, really, actually. This is kind of it's all off the back of um, um, of that weekend that we spent in, in, uh, in Newport. Because uh, since then, I've been down to Celtic Manor about a dozen times. And they've always looked. They've always looked after us and uh, and and made sure we had a good time. And then, um, yeah, that started me. Uh, inspired me, like like you said uh, about they can only ever say no. So I think uh, I've, I've been in Maui uh, every year for the last three or four years at New Year's. <clears throat> it's always good to get out of the British British cold weather. I think after uh, after Christmas. So yeah, it was like an Instagram blag more or less. I, I turned up there and started following them and. Since then, I've become good friends with Alex, the guy who uh, who runs runs the event, and uh, yeah, they haven't kicked me off. They haven't kicked me off. Yeah, and they actually invited me last year to do the pro am, which was oh mate, was oh, a lot, wow, a lot of oh, fun. That's, yeah. that's when you know you're winning it at, at things, especially. Yeah, it is. It is. <clears throat> Until they don't tell you exactly what's going on, because it was actually the next, the following next week that I did what I did the Sony Sony Open. I arrived ten minutes before my tea time. <laughs> and me immediately questioned by a whole gang of people. What's your caddy's name? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yeah. My caddy? Was it like Happy Gilmore? You just pointed to some guy in the crowd and said, "You." <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. They did. They said, "Oi, you here?" <clears throat> Turns out my caddy had never even been on a golf course. <laughs> oh, no. But uh, but even worse than that, and I'm sure you boys can 
can, I'm sure you've had this similar uh, feeling at one point or other. They do the whole, and from London, Hertfordshire Golf Club, Tom Felton. They get up there, I start doing the old, no, thank you, thank you. Three wood, and just topped it about six inches in front of the tee box. <laughs> It's yeah, I can, re- I can relate to that, mate. I did one with um, so Sky Sports over here. They used to do an event called Golf Live, and right. uh, similar thing. But it was it was live on Sky Sports, um, and oh. I went with two of my pals, and they they similar thing. They announce you before you go on on yeah. the tee box, and it was only, I was only playing two holes at the time, and similar thing. And, and on the range, I was really happy with how I hit it, but for some reason, I tried to give it just that extra bit more. As you say, topped it. So you just catch the top of the golf ball, and it went about thirty yards up and down into a little uh, um, ravine, I suppose, with nothing there. And all you could hear was my two pals who came with me, just ha 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 ha. Um, so now oh, I can see that. I've, well, I, um, well, so I did the when the I think it was the English Open or British no British Masters was it? Well, it was at the British Belfry at, years at ago. The, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the first at the Belfry on the Brothers in just a. Very straight hole, very, about 350 yards or something. Very straightforward. However, I decided, right, I'm going to get the big stick out first hole. Let's impress. <laughs> oh, yeah, and all the way down the right hand side was the tented village. And my ball went via the tented village. You could see it bouncing, but it actually bounced back onto the fairway. <laughs> so. I was just praying, yes. please don't kill anyone, please. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it went on the tent. D- 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 yeah, it was d- like you d- could d- see d- it like comically bouncing and then ended it where it meant to be. <laughs> Brilliant, that's what we need on all fairways, really, those tents to sort of knock them back into play if you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, it's very, very annoyingly, just to, to finish off the annoying golf stories, I took Derek the other day, uh, and he's not exactly the most athletic person in the world, let's face it. Uh, his hand-eye coordination is terrible. So I thought, I'm really going to have to spoon-feed him golf here. Like, I'm going to give him a few beers. I'm going to try and make this as the most fun experience we could possibly do. First par three, I stick it to about nine feet. My partner does it to about 12. Derek steps up, and I'm thinking, Christ, this will go bloody anywhere. He stuck it to about four feet. Oh. <sighs> and I three-putt it. So, oh, no. no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable because i remember you getting a hole in one when we played once oh yeah i remember yeah, that yeah, so yeah, clear yeah. Cause i've still never ever had one and i remember standing there going hang on this guy's been playing for <laughs> next to no time and how's he got a hole in one before me because well, it was such you, a I pure am... perfect shot wasn't it yeah you remember it you remember i remember it. It. i'm exactly. that haunted by it <laughs> it's funny because you, you, you won the hole you won the hole with that as well I obviously but you won you. the whole round yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I saw Paul Hodge the other day, actually. He sends us love, too. And he reminded me of uh, of how skillfully chunked that shot was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, so far, that's the only hey, one. They, they all count, though. They all count. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think in terms of, like, learning to play golf, though, try, I'm, trying, I'm try, trying to find a suitable segue here into anything else. Was it. that because you were, was that at, like a similar time when you started playing more music, like with your guitar and stuff like that? Or was that a bit later? Um, yeah, it probably wasn't far off. <clears throat> Golf was a funny one because I've always loved music. Um, uh, and I started off, you know, you probably won't remember this, but me and the, uh, me and the, me and the Slytherin boys, Crab and Goyle. Just be rapping, Josh, you? Just, Absolutely. We did quite I a lot remember. of rapping, quite, <laughs> quite a lot of beat making. I wasn't quite as gangster as they were being a sort of poshly private educated <laughs> child but um but yeah we really we really we really did get into music <clears throat> and then my mum got me a guitar when i was 18 from a car boot sale for those of you who don't know is uh what i think the americans call it a swap meet or a swap meet type thing yeah basically people yeah. turn up in a field open a open their car <laughs> their, their trunks of their car and sell stuff out the back of it yeah. Precisely. Precisely. It's organised. Yeah. You don't yeah. just turn up. It's organised though, yeah. You can't just rock up at a random it's... field and do it. Yeah. <laughs> that's true, although that would be quite fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that was that. And then got, I suppose, and that, and that crept into more instruments, more guitars, and, and uh, you know, more appreciation for making music. But golf really crept up on me because it's, it's, it's a painful sport. In fact, I encourage anyone that doesn't play golf, never, never start. It's a, it's a pursuit of misery, mostly. <laughs> But it does. Uh, it creeps. It, it creeps in on you, doesn't it? That one. That one thirty-foot part, or that one accidental hole in one, <laughs> keeps it kind of 
keeps it coming back pretty often. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but are you? Um, but in terms of like the music side of it, are you still pursuing that in a way of like? So obviously, <laughs> I've noticed a lot of the Q and As you do at like um, uh, well, just any 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 event you seem to be doing and stuff like that is like you seem to have your guitar with you. Yeah, well, that's not really. I mean, this is this is this is a bit cheating on my front, really, because I know you boys have done done lots of. Uh, well, we've all been lucky enough to travel the world with with um, with John Sung, our convention manager. Uh, and my one of my uh, one of my guns to their head is: listen, I'll do the hour Q and A, but you have to you have to lock the doors and make them listen to my music for twenty minutes. <laughs> so, and then, and it's usually in a foreign country where they can't understand what I'm saying anyway. So I usually get a good response. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I remember John showing me a video when you guys were in Argentina, and it looked like the second coming of the Beatles. It was just insane. What can I say? You know, the fifth Beatle has a right. No, it was uh, <laughs> definitely joking. No, there was uh, well, I'm just, as, as I know, you boys know well. Well, the, the the South American fans are particularly passionate. Yeah. Yeah. It's the only time to be honest I've ever had to move a hotel room. Was really? In, uh, well, I was in Brazil. Yeah, they um, well, not a hotel, should I say? They were um, there was hundreds outside. Um, yeah. It was always getting to a dangerous point, so I was like, um, I'm going to skip now. I'm going to say, yeah, actually, and skip because yeah. That's an interesting question because I know obviously with the conventions it's a bit different because we're we're there. Obviously, we get to travel travel the country a bit and we'll see a bit of the town, and it's half the reason that we do it, but. Where did did you ever go on? I'm trying to think of like whether it was the premieres or I know we did some stuff with the that was that bus that was going around. Was, yep. Yes. Which is is there? Is it, have you been anywhere or where has been like the most uh, well crazy fans? I suppose or the ones that are like taking it. Would it be Brazil? Because I think Argentina I think, probably would be for mine. Yeah, for me, Brazil was the most out like in your. Not, I wouldn't say like in a, in a negative way, but just a very passionate. Oh my god, this is going on! Because I was there with the. Um, so I was doing a promotional uh, trip for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Orlando. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's it. James had already agreed to do something for the studio tour in Watford, so he was in Watford, and I went to Sao Paulo for the week. Um, right. By New York, so you know it's, <laughs> yeah, it was a right. fair trade. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that was that was the main, the only time really I've ever felt that it was. And I can't. I think what happened was there was an interview with a fan site who tweeted the hotel I was staying at, um, uh -huh. which suddenly seemed to get. As I say, it, it, I was more concerned about people's well-being, like literally sleeping on the sidewalks in this. You know, you could easily get injured or anything like that, and it was it was a bit of a tricky situation. Oh, no, sure, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, sorry to jump in on James's one. Um, I was thinking about you reminded me of in when we did the. Um, one of the New York premieres, I think one of the only ones I went to, uh, we, there were lots of people waiting outside. You know, you know what it's like, they sleep there for 48 hours to make sure that they get to see, uh, to get to see their favorite, favorite character or whatever. So we brought out 10 pizzas. We bought 10 pizzas, we went out there, we took them out um, and police were there to try to, you know, shepherd it all in. I mean, it, it did get to a point where they were like, please just said, leave, please leave, leave, leave. But there was, <laughs> as, ex as excited as the fans were, they were passing the boxes, taking the slice, slice past. That's well behaved. We, tried the, we tried the same thing in uh, in Brazil when we were at Copacabana, the hotel that was just opposite Copacabana Beach. And same sort of setup with the railings and the excited fans. And I went down there with a couple of pizzas and... <laughs> I was trying to pass the box and literally just bang, just knock the pizza in the air. <laughs> Slices are flying. People are hitting tomato sauce down the face. I was like, okay, this isn't, this isn't working. Like, That's a good you. question. So um, this caused a bit of controversy a couple of weeks ago. Are Go you on. a pineapple on pizza man? Ugh. Ugh. Trying, to think, trying to think of a good analogy to, uh, to, to, to explain how disgusting I find that concept. Exactly. No, I'm, exactly. Okay. All right. Actually, speaking of um, of premieres and everything, I was uh, I remembered a quite a good thing that you were with us as well. Can you remember when we went to Paris and we were and they put us up at the Ritz and then oh, they said, "Yeah, remember?" And yeah, then they yeah. said, "You have <laughs> morn a morning off. What would you like to do?" And we also would like to go to the Louvre. Oh, I'm afraid it's closed, um, but we'll do you a tour of the city. So okay, that's fine. So that. Wednesday in the morning, we all got up and they ended up opening the Louvre for us. 
and literally yes. being able to, we were able to go underneath the barrier where the uh, <coughs> Mona Lisa <coughs> was and all that kind of stuff. I think that was one of the most surreal experiences of my life. Yeah, I was going to say actually, because now I think about it, us, us boys have experienced quite a few of these things together in the sense of, because you know what it's like when you're there in these situations, you kind of have to pretend that it's normal. And you yeah. have to kind of yeah, go, exactly, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> We'll just roll with the punches. Yeah, here I am in the Louvre going underneath the bar. bar. But yeah, you, um, I don't know about you, but I come back and I speak you know, to my brothers or my friends like, you'll never leave this. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, mean, I'm, I, I actually remember it when we were leaving the hotel, uh, when we were leaving the Ritz, people, oh, thank you for coming. Uh, guys, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. You know, obviously, I mean, you're trying to be, yes, no, that was very nice. Very, very, very satisfactory stay. Really enjoyed it. Thinking, I hope my bag doesn't burst open with the towels. <laughs> and the three robes and 16 pairs of yeah. slippers. <laughs> I've been rumbled. I've been rumbled. Run, run. Actually, but actually, now I think about it, and I know this, sorry, this is supposed to be you asking me stuff, but I'm curious because the three of us have been through quite a lot of these experiences of, uh, like the best thing about being part of the whole Potter thing. I mean, obviously, other than being part of the the work, and I think we'd all agree the best thing about it is that ten seconds to a kid where we say hello, then uh, it usually makes their day. Lord knows, go to Great Ormond Street at any point, the children's hospital, and you can light people's days up by just simply walking in there, uh, which is great. Which is great, but also we've we've travelled around the world with this. Really, have like been a lot of places off the back of it. Is that that's that's got to be something that we uh, well we should never take for granted. God, we're so lucky that to have to have seen so many different places and uh, and to have such warm receptions every time you get there. Definitely, right. yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I think I think the amazing thing is that when we go there, or when when we went there, especially with in the earlier days when we were doing quite a few of these different promo trips, you always seem to get the really far exotic places. Um, I remember that like Japan and places, but then again, sure. Jason and I seen to, we, we would go on the, um, the European leg, which was just as fun because we'd be going sometimes to territories where don't get premieres. So it was a big, a, a big deal. And they literally rolled out the red carpet and you've got locals showing yeah. you where, where, where's good and what to do. Yeah. I think that's just so lucky. Really. It's a pretty amazing thing and a pretty good, good side of the deal. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But in terms of like the, I mean, talk, talking about going to different places and doing things. So when the, you know, when the Wisdom World opened in Orlando, yeah, you were involved. You were involved when it was actually a hole in the ground, weren't you? When they were actually digging it up and doing the pieces, pieces there. Because the first we saw of it was about about ten years ago, actually, this week, um, when they were doing the soft opening. But I remember you. I remember you were going to the when it was still being excavated and everything. Yeah, I think. Uh probably in, is in the same as in your world <clears throat> they kind of they want you they want people that are excited to get on board don't they and you know ironically for me these are still the things that i pinch myself about and go i can't i can't believe this is mental because you know the i think my parents probably were saved up for five years so we could go to orlando universal when i was seven or eight i think i went i, I went again when i was 12 just before i think uh, we were that i'd been cast to do to do the film um actually it's a funny story because i was like with, I was, I was with my best friend at the time on it with his family on the, on the holiday and i was ridiculously ill on the day of going to yeah uh, universal uh, theme park and of course my friends just like keep it together man keep it together like just yeah, my, my mom's gonna my mom's gonna drop us off at the front gate and as soon as that happens you can run off and go and be sick and do it if you need to but just hold it together. And I did for the entire day. I threw up a dozen times. It was horrendous. I was lying on tables <laughs> and basically on death door. Um, so uh, to two years later, or sort of, sorry, rather more like 10 years later, be invited back to be part of the, part of them opening up a new, um, a new ride is just. Uh, and you're in the ride. It's, I, I know it's one of those things. It's, it's nuts. It's funny the things we get excited about. Cause I, get, I get really excited about that. I get really excited about Lego. Like there's a Lego Draco. I love that. That's great. Um, yeah, it's the little things, it's the little yeah. minds. So a bit of a, a segue. So when you say you were cast in the, the first one. Yeah. Um, I remember, I think one of my first, obviously we all met at the, the read through for the first time and all that kind of stuff. But I think my main, my first major memory of 
hanging out with you was when we were all leaving Gothland. Yes. And there was you, myself, my dad, Oliver, and your granddad. Yeah. And I, rem- and I remember your, um, you had your skateboard and you were skateboarding there. And then I only remember this because I, I saw the other day on your uh, your Instagram, you put the photo of your granddad who was actually in the movie as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was ironic. It was very strange. Yes, I remember I remember meeting the pair of you because I remember being the 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 elder one of the of the group until um, until there were cooler kids like you turn up. Um, but yeah, go for it. I won't go that yeah. far. <laughs> well, I was embellishing. It's your show. It's your podcast, yeah. mate. Just we'll keep that in. It's all right. Keep it. Up, keep it. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll keep this here. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Those. Uh, I think. How are we? So you you were what 14? 14 yeah. when you started. Yeah. I, I do think the, there's a. We were sorry, the oldest on, of the kids, and then I think you were yeah. in. You were the second oldest. Is that right? Yeah. It's essentially, yeah, yeah. And I always think. Um, sorry, we're drifting from topic here, but I always think that. We were, the, we were the lucky ones, or we were luckier in the sense that I mean, we were still kids that knew no, no idea what we were doing, just blagging our way through um, this, this procedure. But it was like, by that time, I'd already had some kind of understanding of, uh, you know, um, normality. Like the friends that I had when I was 12 years old are still the same friends that I have now. And they progressively got less interested with my stories of Potter as the years went on versus it's like when you, if you start at nine or 10, it can be sometimes hard to, um, well, to go back to normal life, I think, or cause you haven't really established it yet. Uh, but yeah, I just, I always think that we, we were some of the luckiest, luck, lucky ones that, I know Rupert was a similar yeah. age to me as well. But. I mean, I always, I always think it's funny though, if you were to explain to someone where, I remember our first, um, I wouldn't even call it a hotel, where we stayed when we were filming in Gothland, it was like a B and B. It's like yeah. a really small little B and B, and I remember explaining it to someone once, and they, I think they assumed that being a big, big budget film, that you instantly stay in the biggest, bestest hotel nearby. And I was like, <laughs> oh, no, it's just really quirky. I remember we all played darts one night downstairs. Yeah, <laughs> I where it was this? I yeah, yeah, but it was um, as you say. But I think those things, when you get older, you still keep the, a lot of the same friends, friendship circles as you had them before. But likewise, like. I think James and our, our friends groups as well, they are the same. There's almost like this sarcastic, without any of my, my mates, if you say anything impressive, the response will be great, but it's all well done. But like any Englishman, you can't say great or well done without sounding sarcastic. So it's oh, great yeah. or well done. Yeah, or if they, if, they really are, if they really are your friend, they go, all right, oh, Mr. Big Shot Celebrity, <laughs> got another story yeah. to tell me. They were like, hell on a bon on somebody getting told him something today and but obviously I, I was equally uninterested in their day at work so it worked it, it worked it out. works either way yeah <laughs> did you did you dye your hair for the first couple of films yes that's another thing we have in common i suppose i, gonna, I know you, yeah so point, I know that you, yeah but then you went for was it a wig in the third one it's a wig in the good question uh i want to say it was goblet of fire uh here by the way off the top of their head Back and forth now between the Phelps Swift. Name yeah. name of the books. Of one, two, three, four. Philosopher's Stone. Or In order. Stone. Yeah. Chamber of Secrets. Prisoner of Azkaban. Prisoner of Azkaban Goblet of Azkaban, Fire. Goblet of Fire. Order of Phoenix. Ah. Half the Prince. Half the Prince. Deathly Hallows. Order of the Phoenix and uh, and. Um, the other one, sorry, I get, I get, always get those confused. Right? <laughs> I think that, but that's that, I, that always interests me though. Like if you, if you're like like my, like myself, it all blends into one. It, it's it certainly yeah, it do, it do, definitely does. I know it certainly does for um, for certain readers. I mean, my dad was useless, but only because you didn't tend to read one and then put it down, put it down for a month and pick up the next one. You used to sort of read them back to back. So that you turned into one sort of um, one sort of blurb, but no, I can now I think about it, I'm trying to think what are the big chapter marks in because I always remember uh, Order of the Phoenix is the Triwizard Tournament, right? No, yes, no, <laughs> yes, I've got you rumble now. Uh, Goblet of who's... Fire is <laughs> Goblet of Fire is the one where you guys come in with that that there's the scene with the 
is it with the fireworks and then you grow those beards and you go old? Yeah, we so come in, we pretty come much like I do right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, I like that. Uh, I always remember that as being, I think that's the time when you boys, you definitely, you, you either shot up in the height or you look like cool teenagers versus little kids. I, th- I, think, I think we've just literally been able to grow our hair because we're always taller than everybody else because that's why we're pretty right. much at the back of every single scene. Um, and subsequent that what they told you, was it? Every... Yes. That's what they said anyway. Yeah, you go over there, mate. You go right over there. Kids <laughs> going, they put going. behind a wall yeah, where we got there, worried. Going, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, right? <laughs> Perfect. You stay there. <laughs> but sorry, in, sorry, in, terms, sorry of, in terms of like the actual with the filming side of it, though, because I know that obviously with your social media and everything now, you still have a lot of relating content on it, if I call it that, to yeah. that post related stuff. Is that a deliberate thing or is that just something that you? Like all of us, it's part of our everyday, not well, I don't mean like our everyday existence, but it's part of our makeup as as people. Yeah, it is. I mean, usually you know, the social media thing is is such a separate entity and something that I was really not comfortable with at first, but just, just seeing what we can do for various different causes. And even if it's the cause of boredom that we can we can have, we can do this. There's, there's so many good, there are so many good avenues of it. There are so many bad ones as well. But um yeah, the Potter thing is more that, I don't know, there was always a thing, and I'm sure maybe you got this as well, towards the end of our experience, or even after it had finished, uh, i never forget, there was one um, journalist uh, at Comic-Con in San Diego, who says, you know, how does it feel, it's over, and you know, uh, do, you, uh, do you watch the films, and um, how are you gonna shake the burden of being attached to this character? I said, the what? What do you mean yeah. the burden? Like, all right, I, yeah. I have, I've, I was proud of it then. I'm proud of it now. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't make me who I am or anything, but crikey, it's not something that I'm looking to shake away from anytime soon. And I know some of the other actors would rather not be continuously attached to a certain uh, a franchise or a character or whatever. But um, I mean, obviously we're all doing different stuff uh, and we're all, we're all pushing our, our own pursuits, whether it's being crap at golf or trying to write some songs but i'll never i'll never <clears throat> i'll never want to sort of detach myself from it so uh, when anyone sends me some funny meme or uh or some sort of um potter related thing it, as you know it goes down so well i mean look at you with the with the with interviewing your little sister uh it's a thing that fans get so uh so excited about uh, it's you know how could we, how could we not enjoy it <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always remember when we were on, I don't know if we were on a promotional trip or if we just went out to a bar one time and this guy came up to us and he was really pally with James and I. And then literally as he was leaving, he just looked at, he looked at, like barely wouldn't give you the time of day because he was convinced that you are who you are. Oh, like, yeah. In ter- I don't mean like you are who you are, but like your persona is in real life. Like a you prick. you are. <laughs> well, you know, I, I was trying to mull around the idea. No, but like, I mean, like in, re- in like real life, what well, you don't say boo to a goose type character, how I see you as anyway. Um, yeah. Like not an antagonist or anything like that, compared well, to yeah. say, and not, but and I don't mean just impossible, but well, you know, where we're just like, you know, life and soul. But, they, but as I say, so say, like in Potter, where, well, Potter, and then also, I suppose, other roles you've done, where you can be that, that love, love to hate him type character. Is that like something that you, just transitioned into is that just the way like say the cards have fallen that that's that's I, your, I, I th- your go-to or is it I just think, how you enjoy yeah, it I, I don't know i think it is mate i think it is and i'm sure you in a way uh, it's, it's interesting isn't it because i never really thought about these questions until now so i should be careful what i say but uh it must, it must be it's the same for you two <clears throat> you guys uh are you two you two are big jokers you've always had great senses of humor and i think that leaks into the characters that you play um I'm not a dick. I, oh, I like to think I'm not a dick, but uh, it don't was tell him, much James, e- don't tell him. <laughs> Wait till I've left before James. you say. <laughs> no, it's just, it was mostly I don't know. Being uh, being that being that character was very. It felt a lot more fun and natural um, to me. Uh, and, and and of course, you don't realize quite what you're doing when you're when you're um, when you're 12 or 13. But I remember after the first premiere, so coming out in London and someone, a little kid coming up to me saying, you're a real dick. And I got very upset. I was like, why is he calling me a dick? And then uh, slowly but surely being told by my grandpa, actually, the other wizard that this, because he loved it. He was like, this is a sign you've done a good job, my yeah. son. So from there, I don't mind sort of the, uh, the occasional ribbing. In fact, I quite enjoy it. 
Yeah, no, it's certainly a good thing because, as you, as I say, because from what like us hanging around with each other, be it on promo trips or convention, or even just like when we've been in California, hanging out and stuff. Yeah, that's not that's that's not who you are, but it's still it still must show that you're doing a good job to get that reaction from people. Yeah, sure, and I and I'm and I know you're the same here. As far as uh, it's fun, it's fun to be the characters. I, I find the best stuff with the Weasleys for me is like when you guys are all together like at, at home or when, when you all get to sort of dance around each other it's uh it's a it's a it's a really cool dynamic i mean i'm never going to go as far as say that i wish i was a weasley but it's up there <laughs> <laughs> so what was your favorite i'm i'm just gonna ask questions which i've never asked you before what was your favorite film that we filmed yeah and i always re i always refer to this answer when i get asked at conventions pick your favorite year at school it's like well it's pretty hard it's always sometimes hard to do uh I, I love the first one because Chris Columbus had us all convinced, I think, that we were just kids mucking around. Mm -hmm. I, don't recall, yeah. I don't recall ever taking anything particularly seriously on the first film. Uh, and I guess, you know, the, the other obvious choice is sort of the last one, really, because I had a bit of time. Um, I think Daniel, Daniel said it good many years ago about us being in a bit of a bubble, uh, as far as the bubble of, uh, of Leavesden, because um, I think there's an expectation that we were all... Uh, treated like stars and uh and 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 there was a massive divide between the cast and crew which which was not the case i don't think i think it really was a big family vibe um so when we do go somewhere like japan there's people waiting at the airport it's like what the hell i did no idea it was going on to this uh to this level it's, uh, it took me i think six or seven years to realize what do you mean they know they, they know us in Japan? Like, yeah, they they've been watching this in the, and I think that's the thing as well that strikes me is that there's no stone of the earth uh, that doesn't seem to that hasn't seemed to have heard of the films or yeah. seen them. So, where, where, but yeah, the last, say is, the last one was emotional. Where, where would you say is the most uh, random place that someone's recognised you? Uh, my favourite one was always in London in a McDonald's queue, and so on tapped me on the shoulder and said, uh, you Ryan Gosling? <laughs> <laughs> I said, sure, definitely. That's me. I used to get this one a lot. I get at bars. Are you Aaron Paul, the guy from Breaking Bad? Yes. Uh, no, yeah. I, I'm not. And he goes, you should tell everyone that you're Aaron Paul. You get all the girls. You should tell everyone. I was like, thank you very much. I'll, uh, I'll do my best for that one. Uh, and in fact, the most... The most embarrassing one, sorry to ramble on, but I haven't told you this one, I'm sure, was the first time I ever went surfing in California. Got up, first wave, this is easy. What's the, what's the trouble here? And then proceeded for the next hour to be basically drowned by the tumble um, washing machine that is yeah. surfing. Finally ended up on the, uh, my friends are still out there, so I'm on the, uh, the shore, vomiting, green, white, feeling terrible. Uh, definitely swallowed half a gallon of seawater at this point and there were these two girls that i can just see in the corner of my eye creeping towards me the teenagers uh they were italian or french and they're just sort of edging slightly closer towards me and i'm thinking please love this is not the time i don't i really don't want to be doing a picture <laughs> right now but they kept getting closer and then finally one of them comes up with her camera and says uh, uh photograph with uh and she just points in my direction and of course i go Yep, let's do it. I stand up, I'm like, put my arms around, I'm like, take the bloody picture. And they both look at each other like, what's he, what's he, what's he doing? And, and then eventually one of them's like, uh, no, 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 not, not, not picture with you, picture with surfboard. <laughs> what? <laughs> you want me to take a picture of you with my surfboard? They're like, yes, we want to show that we were in California. So from then on out, I have never assumed that anyone ever <laughs> watched <No>. a picture. <laughs> it's these things that keep us grounded, though, right? <laughs> exactly. It's good, it's good yeah. to be reminded every now and then. <laughs> yeah. So what, what, what's been your, um, your normal routine, as it would be then, at the moment, if there is such thing as a routine in these current, these current moments? Yeah. Well, less of a routine. I will say there's lots of... Lots of bad things that have come out of this, uh, other than the obvious panic and people, people, people getting poorly, uh, being housebound and uh, not being able to see your family and stuff. You know, but there's also been a whole wave of good stuff. Uh, people caring more about each other. The NHS getting applauded every Thursday. Uh, a general sense that commerce and economy probably shouldn't 
be more important than helping other people. Uh, I don't know. It's, I feel like this. It's been a. It's a shift, isn't it, for human for human thinking. I think we've, we're none of us are going to come back, go back to work in six months or whatever, and feel and feel um, and feel the same. Uh, so at the moment, I've kind of been indulging in that a little bit, other than other than golfing and walking walking the dog uh, a lot. Just sort of been exploring different things. I know this is going to sound like a crappest example ever, but Jason, Jason Isaacs, who plays plays my dad in the uh, in the films, he uh, gave me a list of films to watch because I'm notoriously bad at having uh, having watched the classics. Um, and I'm not going to list them now because people will be very angry at me that I haven't seen them all. But I watched The Godfather last night for the first time. Uh, have you seen that? Which one? One. Yeah. 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 No, so I started with that. Started with that last night and ended up being a six-hour, six-hour Godfather marathon. But yeah, these are. I think it's a good time to do the things that we probably always said that we were going to do. I started writing scripts, uh, started reading a lot more scripts, started to work with different music. Music programs. I've got to that age now where things baffle me on computers. So I've taken I've taken these like three hour <clears throat> three hour courses online or, or YouTube videos rather uh, to try and learn my way around certain music projects. So uh, wait, look, what, what have you guys? What have you been up to? Have you, have you learned j- Japanese or, or or have you built uh, built Trafalgar Square? Well, J- James was supposed to be wow. learning Spanish. Ah, I don't. Hola. Which which hasn't which hasn't has, hasn't materialised. It's kind of gone like my uh, my running routine, which lasted all for the first three weeks, and now it's just slowly got less and less and less. Yeah, which kind of drops put- out. So it's, I think it's more just a case of trying to keep things new, which is where this whole podcast thing came from. To be honest with you, because right. we were, uh, yeah. it was literally just something we thought we 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 dabbled in it about eighteen months or so before, and there was a good response to it, and we thought, why not just give it a go um so it's been quite nice to do that but also as well the as you say it's been nice that it's been on this whole thing has put other things into perspective in terms of what is important what is what is right what is wrong so how long is it have you been out in the states now tom a while a while actually probably about nearly 10 years on and off i mean um Obviously, when people say, "Oh, where do you live?" It's like, "Well, I may live in LA, but but uh, oh, I have a I have a, a place to call home there." But I'm really, you're really sitting in one place for um for too long. Uh, um, ironically, my my taste buds have not changed. In fact, the people at the local pub that I go to, it's the closest thing I can get to to my mum's home cooking, they take the piss that before I go home to London for two weeks. I'm still eating English pub food in LA for the two weeks before it. Uh, not the most exciting uh, cuisine in the world, but uh, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. You, you, you boys, have, you boys like it out here. You've been out here quite a bit, haven't you? In America, I, mean, I know you guys did a did quite a bit of traveling and touring Florida and driving around and whatnot. <clears throat> yeah, yeah we, exactly. We, yeah, um, similar to what you were saying is that obviously this is probably the longest all of us have gone without being on an airplane in yeah, very 10 true. years or something. So it's a, uh, it's definitely a different way of doing things, but you know, it's, it's good fun. And um, I think it'll be sorry, my mind is wondering. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Yeah. You really saved that conversation there, James. Yeah, mm-hmm. my, my... <laughs> <laughs> but what's, so what's next then, Tom? Or is it just a case of see what's, see what's coming up when everything opens up in terms of film wise or are you because i know you're doing your friday night sessions on uh on yeah Instagram live. I, I yeah I've, I've kind of i've kind of put that to a bit of a side at the moment in fact i could probably get your boys two cents on it because i this is it, this wasn't working the format instagram live trying to trying to read the uh read the comments and then i remember mean, uh, both of you i think very kindly uh tried to jump on one of my I was my in the ones. waiting room for ages and I thought, oh, okay, I, he hasn't seen me yet. Well, I, I know, <laughs> I know, and it's not really fair to ask someone to, will you wake up nine hours out of your time and just stand there and wait for me to try and find you and click you? I'm not very tech good. So I'm, I'm actually speaking with Instagram right now about trying to find a, uh, a better way of doing it. I mean, and some, some people have sent me some 12 page way of, I can attach my Zoom to my Facebook, to my, uh, and then it kind of baffles me, but I need some, some tech support for sure definitely what was the um so the other day you put the poster for your latest project what 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 is that can you tell us about 
Ah, oh, Breaking for Wales. Yeah, so this was actually my first first real attempt at stepping into a, a territory you're more familiar with, of um, comedy, really, and trying to be a bit funny. Um, it's a, it was a, it was a, it was a script that was sent to me a long time ago, um, and it's essentially the story is about a road trip about a brother and sister who have sort of been forced to reconcile after their mother has passed away, and in a sort of Brewster's Millions fashion, she was a complete nutter and uh, and refuses for, for either of them to have either of their inheritance unless her ashes are ingested by a whale bear with me because <laughs> so, she's a complete she's a complete whale fanatic and basically she wants to be with the brethren of the sea that's where she wants to go uh, and 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 the two of them are sent on this little uh well on this trip really across the country in in a in an rv which was barely running uh and um yeah it's kind of it's a, a comedic look at these two different characters we, the, the, the big experience to me with that one is that we did it in 10 days or 11 11 days shooting and uh, 100 wow. pages 105 pages in 11 days is really really wow. really not like not that easy uh you know it literally was the opposite of what we were brought up with as far as doing three-day rehearsals or two-hour yeah. blockings or whatever it was so how like long that. was it how long was an average day on that well, we, the other thing is where we're, we're, we're at the mercy of everything's outdoors. Everything's usually on a rig where we're driving. Uh, and we're, we're at the mercy of the weather. Uh, you know, it was actually a, a slightly traumatic experience at first because I thought, that how on earth, how on earth are you going to get any of this to make sense? You know, and it was, it literally was more of a case of you better bloody know your lines because when you roll camera, like you, you get that one take, two takes, boom, we're moving on straight away. Uh, I got I got the sense of like not not a, a bit panic really um, so the experience was was quite um, full on uh, it was very 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 enjoyable it's just lots to sink your teeth into um, but when the film came out I did I really didn't know what to expect and I don't know about you but I don't watch I don't particularly watch my work um, in fact I haven't really ever seen the Potters outside of the uh, premieres but. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, it was definitely a moment um, where I thought, Christ, this 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 could be not what I thought it was going to be, and I really really enjoyed it, which is I never enjoyed stuff that I do, but I thought it actually came out it actually came out pretty good. So yeah, that's the latest one. I believe I know in America it's available on uh, on iTunes and so forth. I'm actually I was speaking to the producer yesterday because I said how important it is to me. If we're going to do a full promotion, then it should be available to the world. You can't say uh, you yeah. can't promote it around the world and then uh, not let them buy it. <laughs> so yeah, soon soon it should be available. <clears throat> okay. And what was that? What was that called again? Uh, Breaking for Wales. Breaking for Wales, and not the country Wales. The, <laughs> the big, the big ones. Yeah. That's what they should have called our trip to Wales for the golf. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Four putting for Wales. That sounds great. So, how did that come about? Was that like a, in terms, I mean, in terms of like coming about with the process of you doing it? Were you almost like a, um, like in theatre mode, as it were? So you have to learn the whole script pretty much from start filming. Because if you're filming it, that long, it, it, you can't really learn each day. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's and it's and it's it's good. You know, nice. These weren't Shakespearean monologues. They were pretty pretty conversational stuff, which makes it a lot easier, obviously. Um, but as you know, with comedy, uh, and I found out pretty quickly, timing and uh, delivery, uh, and most importantly, I think, is, is chemistry, which again, actually, is a, a great, without blowing smoke in your direction, um, why you two work so well in the, uh, in the Potter films, because you bounced, you bounced uh, each other's comedic energy off each other, and I think that's what... Uh, that's that's what kind of shit. That's what kind of strong. Something again. Something I've never asked you. What would be? What would you say is your main acting method? Yeah, are you just, just, a, just like, are you, are you just like a, a rock up and go, or just blag it to the high heavens? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, it is quite interesting, isn't it? Because we because we we we've spent a lot of time obviously with each other, but we can go down three hour conversations about putting techniques. We've never actually asked each other about. No. How did you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I always think, and, and obviously it's all really, uh, into, uh, everything's uh, unique. And uh, sometimes you're in the back of the back of the shot, and you just have to do one thing. And sometimes you're at the front of it, and you have to do others. But um, my whole thing, uh, I think we were there's there's an irony in that we were young wizards being taught magic by 
master magicians or master wizards and witches. Uh, and in reality, we were, we were young, pretty crap actors being taught by the best in the world or the cream of the English crop for sure um, about how to act. Uh, and, and just as much acting off screen as it was on and how, how to create an environment. Because I don't know about you, but I, I, uh, I care far more about who I'm working with than what I'm working on. Uh, my my worst nightmare would be would be playing would be on like a James me you know being a James Bond villain, but the guy playing James was a complete ass, and you just mm-hmm. couldn't get on, and you couldn't. Yeah. Uh, and I'm very I like to be as silly. Uh, my advice to youngsters who are getting acting is like be be a kid, just be stupid, be silly, be be present. Don't don't worry about your lines so much. Just listen to what they're saying, and then just react react normally. Um, and I think the more you can get yourself into that headspace, you know, where you, where you can re- literally start messing with each other on scene. You can, just, you can start saying lines from a different scene just to see how he's going to react. Or, or I love doing stuff when it's coverage. If, if we're doing this way, and he, he'll give me the, the lines behind the camera, but he'll be pulling stupid faces the whole time to do it. Uh, as a way of, you know, just kind of breaking you out of this idea that it's something serious because it's, it's all a bit of play play and fun really um yeah i, th- I think as well it, like, as you said as, as you said about watching other people like these master people showing us how mm. to obviously their methods with it as well but i always remember when we were in new york and there were these guys who you know the guys who hang around at airports to hustle people to sell sign autographs sure. and sell them sure and they they wouldn't leave the hotel lobby and i remember gambon going outside and signing a load of them gandalf <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he walked back in and just went lesson lesson number one lesson number one <laughs> it was brilliant yeah oh, i mean i that, that's i mean they were they were all brilliant teachers i mean jason jason still uh still keeps in touch with me a lot and when he's but they've all been incredibly helpful in learning i had a massive crush on helena growing up i'm sure uh learned so much from from alan rickman hello boy <laughs> this whole like there is that's great uh gambon was brilliant because because i suppose actually yeah the first time i actually did have some acting to some real um meet with some with one of the big cast was uh with michael gambon on half blood prince and i knew i knew the lines but because it was a big moment and it was only me and him on set versus usually you can sort of uh blend in with the other 20 slytherins um i just i just balled my lines up one after the other and you know you know what it's like what once once you've made the mistake three times and you go for crying out loud, for crying out It's like the shanks. It gets in your yeah, head. It's and there now, then, yeah. and now, oh my God, now I'm shanking it everywhere. And then eventually they sort of say, all right, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just cut for a bit. We'll have a break. And then Gambon whips out the old pack of fags out of his beard. <laughs> and he's like, uh, do you want to go for a cig- cigarette? Like, all right, go outside. And really sort of pluck the courage up to say, I'm really sorry. I'm really, really sorry, Michael. I promise I won't do this again. Like, I will figure it out. I will get these lines right. I don't want to waste your time. And he looked at me very, very oddly. He was like, do you have any idea how much they're paying me each day? You keep, <laughs> you, you keep up at this rate, I'll have a new Ferrari by tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. like, oh. And then immediately I was like, oh, all right, this, this, isn't, this isn't serious. We can just have some fun here. And then, uh, and then hopefully that, that, that I got the scene, I guess. I'm going to use that in future now to describe when you keep, not you personally, but if, if you're doing any kind of lines and uh, you can't get them out, it's the shanks of acting. <laughs> the shanks. I don't want acting. to do it, but I can't help it. <laughs> Shacting. Or shanking. Yes. No, one of those hurt. Yeah, it's a horrible, <laughs> horrible place to be, mate, for sure. <laughs> well, I'll tell, tell you what, Tom. Um, we know you've got, you got, you got your stuff going on, but James always asks our guests um, a couple of questions. So oh, yeah. this goes throughout everybody. Okay. So it's the uh, first thing that comes into your head. Is it- and is it like every is it, week? It's like I, a speed round. Well, kind of. Uh, every week, I keep meaning to give them prep, but I always forget to give people prep. Prep. So here you go. Uh, no prep. What, go for it. What is your favourite song? Something. George Harrison. Good. Something uh, in the way um, she moves. Go on, please. F- favourite film. Godfather's in my head because I just saw it last night. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, planes, trains, and automobiles. Or Home Alone, Jurassic Park. Well, okay. I guess if you watch them all in one go, they count as one. Hi, film, don't they? So, sorry. sorry, my blind's going down. Let me just go turn the light off. I'm going to be in darkness in a second. <laughs> Wait, come back to us, Ollie. Come back oh, to us. No. Well, he's gone. Um, 
From any film or TV, what is your favourite quote? Oh man, there's just so, there's so, so many. But I'm going with the instinct. These aren't the right answers, but they're my instinctive ones. How about Roger Moore in, uh, he's back. Um, Roger Moore in James Bond, shoots him with the, sharp, with the harpoon gun. I think he gets the point. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah, this is again, instinct answers, but go for it. And final one, what is your favourite food? Ice cream, instinctively. I, I, I only say that because I trust ice cream. Like you could give me pretty much any flavor and because I trust the, 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 the format that it is. It's like crisps. <laughs> ice, cream and, ice cream and crisps. I'll try any flavor, but try to get me to eat foie gras or oh, oysters. Right no chance. Never <laughs> sure. And we've got, we've got, we did get a couple of questions sent in when we, when Jay said that we were having you on, on here. Can, oh, I, can I ask you one or two? Please, um, man, please. Okay, well, there's only, there's only one, I think we've only got time for one. How long have you and Emma been dating for? Well, that's not, well, so it's not true because we've been engaged for the last three years. So that's not long to dating any longer, is it? Really? Is, that, is that still <laughs> the case? Uh, no, far <laughs> from it. Far from how, it. How much does that annoy you? Happened. No, not at all. No, not no, at no, all. No, I don't, I don't know I don't, what... mean, I don't mean. I don't mean you guys not, not, not dating. I mean in terms of everyone asking oh. you all the time because you guys oh, are yeah. hanging out, you know. Oh, I, I cry about it every night. Why won't she take me back? No, <laughs> uh, I, I don't mind it at all, mate, because I know as well it's not really anything to do with me and Emma because um, there's, there's an equally strong fan group that want me and Harry to be together and there's the, another group that want me and an Apple to be together. All this uh, travel... You know, what they call it? Sh shipping? Shipping? Like a Drary is in Dramoni and then the <laughs> Apple thing. Don't, you, don't even get me started with. But uh, I know wow, okay. I, it's more of a case of the good girl and the bad guy. Uh, but yes, obviously, Emma and I love each other dearly and have been, been best mate, mates mate, for Mate, mate, I was only winding time. you up. I was only winding you up. You don't need to go on the <laughs> Off. No. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know. I deserve that. But no, it's, um, but no, but end on a, end on a good note, though, mate. Thanks, um, thanks so much for taking the time to have a chat with us and go, right. go and hit them well today. Yeah, sweet man. I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, I think what you're doing is awesome. The 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 podcast. I'll definitely be watching more. I think the more uh, variety of life you get on there, the better. And oddly, it is kind of weird, isn't it, that we probably half of these questions we've never even asked each other. That's nuts. No, no, it's exactly. That's, that's that's kind of our thinking throughout the whole thing as well. I'm just getting a bit of a uh, a new, I suppose a new in, insight into people, but also just in terms of if this can brighten someone's day somewhere, then we're doing a good job. Yeah, sure. And to be honest with you, I forgot completely that people are going to be watching. But it's been a it's <laughs> nice to have a chat. It's nice to have a chat with you lads, man, and catch up. I'm glad you're all uh, glad you're happy and healthy. And then we'll definitely have to do a thing on um on my uh, my little home party one day on Friday. We'll get try and get everyone on. Um, figure out some way to do it because I'm actually really keen as well to get some uh, to get the pot a lot back together as soon as we can it's been a while with, with that one Tom is that all going you say you're right how much did you raise the other day for for Great Ormond Street uh over I want to say over eight thousand dollars it's not fantastic it's, wow it's incredible well it's, in, it's in, Oh, cheers. It's, it's incredible. I mean, again, I was just doing lips and giggles. It was a lot of fun. I mean, I, I, my favourite bit was where me and you, Jim Bob, with the, uh, with the heads up. <laughs> heads up when you could see the answer. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit, I could see it. <laughs> I'm smart. Yeah, that, one, uh, that one made me chuckle. But look, look, the format is still, is still, we're still learning its way. But uh, I, I, I will keep watching your podcast and steal whatever I can from it. Nice one, mate. No, oh, thanks again. Mate. Cheers, That's good. No worries, man. I'll speak to you soon, lads. And there we have it. What a way to finish. Yeah, thanks very much for Tom for joining us there. He, he had to dash, actually, because he was off to play golf. So hopefully he didn't get the shanks, but we will find no, out. Hopefully he did all right. Actually, I need to fill everyone in. When we were talking about his hole-in-one experience, what happened, the, the reason why he was kind of quick, I think, to get off that subject was because we actually spent a good five minutes looking for his ball all around the green. And then I just said, oh, have you looked in the hole? And he was playing with this bright yellow ball. And I remember walking over and just seeing this almost illuminating sight coming from the pin, from the cup. And uh, yeah, he, that's, that's how he found he got his hole in one. But well done for him because they all count. Well, to, to paint the picture of the hole, it was a golf course in Los Angeles. Uh, par three, downhill, probably about 130 yards long. And there was a big mound in front of the 
of the tee box. And Tom, I we I think the three of us hit pretty good shots into the green, but you can't see the the pin because of this big mound. And then Tom st- steps up and chunks it. He must have really upset some moles or something down there because more turf came up and the ball ran over this hill and then we couldn't find it. As Oliver said, we were looking around for ages and eventually it was in the pin. There we go. He did it. Well done, Tom. As we say. But once again, (laughs) thanks so much to uh, to Tom for coming on and spending time to do a a bit for us on our podcast today and it was really nice hearing about his new ventures, what he's got coming up as well. But also, more importantly, thank you so much to everyone out there for watching on the YouTube, for listening, wherever you get your your podcast from. Um, thank you so much for all the continued to support on our Double Trouble podcast. And also as well, I need to get this in now. Thank you to everybody who've been asking their Alexa or their OK Google or their Siri or their Bixby to play the podcast. It is amazing how how much people say to us, I did it and it works. So keep up with that because I'm finding it really, really funny to do so. Yeah, you could also say things like, Alexa, turn off the lights. <laughs> Alexa, well, turn on the lights. There you go. <laughs> well, you can do, but that's not really going to help people find our podcast, is it? No, but it makes me giggle knowing that they're stuck in the dark. And now back in the light because you turned the light back on. Yeah, okay. But then how are they going to listen to this one? Because you say, Alexa, play Double Trouble. See? There you go, exactly. Does anyone else kind of stare learn? into the distance when they say it? They, does anyone actually look at an Alexa when they speak to it, or do they just kind of gaze into nowhere? I don't know. Maybe someone's got this on in their kitchen right now, and we'll just, you know, we'll just say something random like, uh, "Alexa, add butter to my shopping list." No, it's got to be more random than that. Okay, okay, okay. Alexa, order fifty gallons of propane. You don't want to blow up the building, do you? Okay. Alexa, order six fire extinguishers. Is that good? Yeah. Or better yet, Alexa, subscribe me to the Double Trouble podcast. Boom! There you go. That's what you want to do. Why did you win with boom after you've ordered loads of gasoline? Uh, well, it was, it was a metaphorical thing, wasn't <laughs> so, it? So the last thing they ever did in their... Oh, well, they ordered... Uh, Really random stuff. And then they subscribed to a podcast and then they blew up. Called called Double Trouble. As long as that's in, that's no problem. Yeah. As long as that's in, as long as they subscribe, that's okay. Because that's the way this gets out there and it just keeps getting better and better. And we're really, really thankful once again for all you guys listening to us waffle on and the continued support. And as I said earlier today, hopefully this is bringing a smile to your face and you can just enjoy it with, uh, with everything else that's going on right now. Definitely. Guys, thank you very much for all the support. Thanks again for Tom Felton. And once again, thank you so much for all the continued support uh, with us on our podcast escapades um, over the last couple of weeks. We've really enjoyed doing it and bringing some laughter and hopefully some smiles to many people out there. Thanks again for all the feedback we've been receiving. Um, Noted a few of the responses last week about the audio needed to be turned up, up, up. So hopefully you found that a lot better this time as well. And also... A big, big shout out to, once again, everybody out there who's sitting right now with a big smile on your face. Because James loves a shout out. A shout out, yes. All the best. Stay safe. And we'll see you next week. Bye.